As this Wednesday begins, we begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let the ho your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us begin our morning in the word. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. As we continue on Places Along the Way, Meditations on the Journey of Faith by Martin and Micah Mar Marty, we are in Erat today. And here's our picture. If I can get that for you all. The text accompanies this is the end of the flood story. So I'll, let me read what they have highlighted of that. So as you remember, Noah was told, build an ark, and everybody thought Noah was crazy, and he did it anyway. And then he puts two of every animal and his family in the ark, and then it rained for 40 days, 40 nights, that 40 again. Bible people love that number 40. And then now this flood is subsiding. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Eret. And then ch chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Moses, to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of the flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh of the earth. Let's see what the Martin Marty has to say about Erat and the ark resting and God promising things to us. Erat, our journey, which began as a walk, has quickly become a climb at the high place called Erat. According to the Genesis account, a survivor named Noah went out with his family from the ark where God had helped them outlast a great global flood. God remembered Noah, chapter 8, verse 1. A universal flood, a crowded ark, a mountaintop landing, and a divine rescue are so far from our experience that they seem irrelevant. Why stop at this point on our pilgrimage? We stop for good reason, to remind ourselves that God remembers us. Cooped up wherever we are, worthy of no favor, yet memorable recipients of divine care. The story climaxes when God provides a rainbow as a sign. The rainbow is a reminder to God. I see it. I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature. It is really we, however, who need the reminding. 
we may not find necessary the sight of an actual mountain or rainbow. Entirely through our ears when we are reached by the word of God and through hearts touched by that word comes our awareness that our creator recreates, the giver of life keeps life, keeps giving life. Let us pray. Remember your covenant as you promised, O creator and recreator, for in it we are secure. Amen. Now I'm just going to just name the, the kind of craziness of that chapter 8 verse 4 of like seven months into like the after it rained and the flooding like like was going down they came to rest on the mountaintop on the 17th day so maybe like would that be like november i don't know <laughs> that finally we are able to get out of our arcs i i don't know but I'm, i guess I, that is remarkable to me because of the length of time not just the 40 days of flooding and the preparation and the 40 days of flooding and then being in this crazy ark. Can you imagine being in an ark with animals that slither, animals that um, moo and neigh, elephants, giraffes, spiders probably. I don't like spiders. I don't like snakes even more, but. Um, and as we just had Francis of Assisi day of like blessing of the animals and things like that. Yes, they're blessings, but you know, the wolf and the lamb, how do you, where do you put them in the house together? Where do you put um, mortal enemies in the circle of life in this cycle? How do you feed them? What do you feed them? How did this all happen? And of course, the cleanup. Shoveling out the barn is never fun. It's a lot of hard work. And where do you put that? And how often are you doing that? There's not that many people in that ark with opposable thumbs that can actually do these things. So the, the what they endured in this ark for like nine months really because you have the flood and then you have the seven months and then now you're on a mountaintop can you imagine like landing on top of mount rainier and it's like okay there's gotta figure out how to get down from here safely with all these animals do you just open the doors and let them all come out kind of fun to think about and it kind of feels like our time right now we're in like this ark <laughs> <laughs> of our own little houses and you know we sometimes get to do like our carrier pigeons or our like car trips to the grocery stores and and things like that but really our little ecosystem has been reduced to our yards and we've been waiting and at times it feels like we've been forgotten or we don't remember perhaps what it feels like feels like to know that god is blessing us that god is here our anxiety and our sense of crisis is a kind of ebbing and flowing like the waves around that arc and there's days that are just too much and there are days that we're like well what am i complaining about and there's people who are suffering more than us and sometimes we are those people suffering more. And life continues as we float and as we wonder and as we are secure-ish, but danger is all around us. And we wonder where God is. And we are a people of faith. So many people in our lives. I've been, I've been remark like the daughter in Sunday as a you know, new pastor to creator, um, Menting, this is meant with complete care and love, but just wonder and, and, and reality of how many of those children that I saw posted, adult children and grandchildren, um, have, are in a church right now. How many of those have um, an active faith? I mean, what, we're baptized, God is with us, but using that promise, being wrapped in it and reminded of it, and restored by it is such an important part of faith It's part of that giftedness that we have as a people of god not just being um, in god's presence but knowing it and using it as a place to be a cornerstone in our life to be a place of calm and return and know that we are precious and loved 
and so many of our people in our influence, maybe in our COVID families that we are, you know, able to interact with now, don't have that. Don't have that same faith, that same promise. And so I think Martin Marty is, is correct here. It's the, this covenant with Noah is a universal covenant and it's also an unconditional covenant. It does not say, if you do this, I will then not destroy the earth again with flood. If you do this, I will love you. It doesn't say that in this covenant. It is purely, I will remember, I will care for you. I will restore you. It's all God just pouring out God's self. And God, rem God doesn't forget us. We do forget God. And also using, um, Rossi and I were, were talking about this. Why then, if God doesn't forget us, is there all these banter back and forth about remembrance? And I might do this for my adult study this week too on our, our text for Exodus 32. But it's partly because God wants a confession out of us, that we believe God's promises. And God sometimes uses that to bring us into that, that faith fold, that trusting again, because we have wandered. We are on a mountaintop or we are in a valley or we are on a rocky boat with leaks and or a bunch of animals or we are in our house or we are waiting and we are wondering where God is. And as we hit the shore, as whatever's next, if it's a little bit more change in what we're allowed to do these days or or a retreat back into less, if it's school opening up, if it's going to the dentist or the or hairdresser or the doctor for the first time in the last six months because of COVID, those first steps out are tenuous. And God is there. God is there restoring you. God is there recreating you. God is there because God remembers. We forget. And in our journey of faith along the way, what God does is God gives us God's word. We might not actually see a rainbow. We might not even see the mountain some days, right? They're gonna have some clouds coming in the next few days. Just because we don't see the rainbow, we don't see the mountain, doesn't mean that God's promise isn't still there. It's everlasting. And what we need is we need the word to remind us that I have established a promise with you. You, who are listening right now, God has established a promise with you. And God also establishes that promise with those you share the promise with. And that promise is one that reminds us that God is here. Whether we're in a boat, in a hard situation, waiting and waiting and waiting, whether we're landed on that mountaintop and wondering what's next. No matter where we are, God remembers and God is there with you at all times. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for everlasting promises that you remember, God for your care of Noah and his family and of creation, for your bow in the sky and your promise in words. May you continue to remind us who are so forgetful of your faithfulness and your remembering all times and in all places, your promises. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we give thanks. 
May you continue to create us anew, to recreate life, to help us restore those connections that have been frayed a little bit and have been challenged by distance and and this shelter sheltering in place and just the reality of this time may you help us with faith to connect to to regard to be present um, whether it's with phone or or drive by waving <laughs> Or, or other creative ways of connecting. We ask you to be with us as we also become your mouth of promise. For the gift of relationship with others, we give thanks. Thank you for being in the complexity. And sometimes, Lord, though, can you make it a little less complex? Can you have us put aside some of our divisions and to see the humanity in one another, the, the challenge that we all bear, the worry that's on our shoulders, and the hope that we all want to have and sometimes have trouble seeing and finding. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray, may we be instruments of your peace. May we together do what we can't do alone including hearing your word. We can't tell ourselves Jesus loves us. That's something we need to hear from somebody else, Lord. You've created us to be in community. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for President Trump and Vice President Pence. We pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We pray for the election in the coming, in the beginning of November and the votes that are being cast now. We ask you to be with Governor Inslee and with um, his opponent in the election, Culp. May you be in that election as well. We ask you to be with all world leaders in this global pandemic and also the interrelatedness that we have in our world. For the people of countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray. Thank you for, or we ask you for, I guess, peace and prosperity and dignity throughout the world. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we give thanks. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask you to give them energy to keep on and the ability to open up conversation and understanding with others. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, we give you thanks. May you continue to strengthen us and embolden us in your mission as a church. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.